afternoon, everyone. Welcome into Talking Pittsburgh on this Friday, May 21st. Hopefully everyone's having a great day, had a great day, and ready for a good weekend. I am Andrew Bamlett, uh, tuning in and filling in for Jeremy today. So, yeah, you're stuck with me today. You're stuck with me for update. And Jeremy will be back uh, next week in normal time and, and Jeremy fashion. So we're ready for that. Uh, today we got a good show for you. Uh, we have, of course, I'll get you updated with um, Outlook on June for the weather and some other headlines. And then we'll uh, go over to uh, a ribbon cutting we had yesterday, a race day events. Uh, we'll, we'll hit that up and it uh, looks like a pretty uh, nice building. They've been going, but we finally were able to have the ribbon cutting. Uh, so they have been uh, already up and running. But it was a, it's a nice building and it was a, a nice day to be outside and enjoy a little bit of the warm weather. Uh, out at race day events and then we'll uh, I sit down with uh, uh, police chief Chad Brecklin and get an update from the police department and uh, so you'll have to sit sit tight and wait for that and uh, just have some good topics today and again we have uh, thefts from auto happening so we talk about that uh, once again here in the city of Fitchburg all right but we'll get right to your headlines and we're gonna look at uh, June and outlook uh, above uh, above average temperatures looks like uh, one month outlook for June favors above average temperatures across the state of Wisconsin. In addition, the one month precipitation outlook gives gives us an equal chances of above or below or near average per precipitation, uh, which could mean we may not get out of the moderate drought uh, we are in across uh, southern uh, Wisconsin. So, you know, being right on track for precipitation when we've been low right now, you know, like it says, we might still have that drought continuing through June, so we'll see. But it looks like above average temperatures is uh, what's going to happen here in June. And right now it's above average for May uh, this week. So we'll, I guess we'll see if that uh, continues to get us down through the rest of uh, the summer. Uh, but we're going to talk to you a little bit about the construction update through the week and give you some of the traffic alerts uh, that have come up this week. And we're going to start with uh, current conditions right now is Fish Hatchery Road southbound uh, left turn on East Sherrill is closed. So if you come down here, you do get uh, pushed back over to the right lane. And uh, the turn lane plus the left uh, straight lane is also uh, closed at the moment. Uh, so you are in that uh, far right lane as you come up to East Sherrill. So you aren't allowed to make a left turn there. You have to go straight on and either do a U-turn at the next intersection or get to... Um, Lacey Road and go that way to get to wherever your final destination is. Uh, also, we have some upcoming uh, traffic alerts. We have Traceway and Ocella. Uh, you have uh, southbound lanes closures. That'll be Thursday. That was yesterday. Um, and continuing, uh, we also have uh, streetscaping going on through the 24th and 25th of next week. Northbound median, northbound median lanes. Uh, to close to install perennials uh, in the median from 9 to 3. And the uh, storm sewer uh, punch list walkthrough will be happening on the 26th southbound, so Beltline to Traceway lane closure for storm walkthrough uh, is 9 to 1 on the 26th. And then also you have on Wednesday, the um, June 2nd, uh, you have uh, Greenaway Cross and Fish Hedgery Road uh, intersection lane closure uh, for storm walkthrough as well, 9 to 1 on that one. Uh, Glacier Valley at uh, K Hill will be uh, shut down scheduled on the 1st of June following Memorial Day weekend and will continue until we switch to stage F, which is switching to the other side of the road, anticipated for early July. And then temp temporary gravel paths have been put down to the Glacier Valley. Uh, to the pedestrian overpass will remain available at grade crossing at the intersection will be closed. So that, that intersection will be closed for that crossing. Uh, so those are kind of your traffic updates going on right now and coming up. All right, next we also have the Pittsburgh Sustainability, Sustainability Bike Tour happening this weekend. This will be tomorrow uh, from 1 p.m. We'll be leaving from City Hall here. Uh, biking to several locations in uh, West Central Fitchburg. It's over a two to two and a half hour tour. And the group will talk about, uh, take a few steps, talk about a few steps taken to 
recent years uh, to reduce the city's ecological footprint and enhance the residents' access to nature areas and high quality ecosystem services. So if you're interested in doing this, uh, you will need a trail pass, a straight tra trail pass, which you can get a daily one or get the annual one, you know, whichever you prefer. And if you're having issues, uh, you can give, uh, give us a call down here and we can help you out uh, to get that figured out. You can call Phil Groupie here at uh, City of Fitchburg. All right, also we have uh, presentations in the park. This will be held on uh, June 24th from 5.30 to 7.30 at the Loser Family Heritage Center. Uh, the Loser Fam Family Heritage Center will be hosting a variety of speakers throughout the summer. Uh, this week's presentation is courtesy of uh, Julia Winden from the UW Arboretum. So this is again at uh, 3101 Lake Farm Road. Registration is requir required. You can uh, see the uh, email address there to go to. Uh, also, we have gates will be opened at 5.30. Presentation starts at 6. Uh, please bring your own chairs or blankets and set up uh, six feet apart from other attendees. Arrive early to get some uh, dinner from the local food truck and drinks from Delta Beer Lab. Dogs are allowed but must be leashed uh, and not be uh, disruptive as well. So if you have a noisy dog, probably don't want to bring them for the presentation. Um, and this is what this one's about. Have you ever heard of citizen science and wanted to learn more? This is your, uh, in our changing world, citizen science plays an important role in answering significant scientific questions. This growing field depends on engaged volunteers who are able to collect data on a border scale that traditional research methods can achieve. Uh, their contributions deepen scientific knowledge, help monitor natural systems, in the time of rapid environmental change and support findings that can inform uh, conservation practices and policies. Uh, so this presentation, you will learn about six different uh, science projects happening at the UW-Madison Arboretum and how you can get involved. Uh, from monarch larvae to dragonflies, bluebirds to fungi and spring monitoring and microplastic uh, sampling there's something for everyone. So many of these projects can be pursued in your own backyard or local public na nature space and can be adapted for families and children. So that sounds pretty cool. So I would uh, suggest going down to that uh, coming up. Uh, last story here, we do have a new data snapshot uh, released for, from Public Health Medicine Dane County uh, during uh, this is from May 3rd to May 16th. Uh, during this period, there was an average of 31 cases per day, which is the lowest average since uh, we've had June of 2020, which is awesome to hear. Uh, there was an average of only one case per day among ages 70 plus during the 14-day period. And after just a week of being eligible, we're nearly at 29.8% of people ages 12 to 15 who have received the first dose of the vaccine. That is awesome to hear. Uh, only you know a week in and we have about a third already taken care of. That is good to hear. All right, we're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, we'll be heading out to race day events and see what uh, their new building looks like. That's coming up next right here on Talking Fitchburg. We're all just trying to keep things running for those who rely on us. Ready! That's why we don't have time to be sick with the flu. And especially this year, no one has time to get sick. Get a flu shot for yourself and those around you too. Gaining weight was easy. All I had to do was sit down and eat. Losing weight's a lot harder. I have to work at it every day. But with every step, I lower my risk for type two diabetes and heart disease. And that makes every step, every choice, every day. Very much worth the effort. Learn how you can help stop diabetes by losing weight, eating healthy, and staying active. Visit CheckUpAmerica.org or call 1-800-DIABETES. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. Welcome back into Talking Fitchburg. Now we'll uh, go out and join race day events for their ribbon cutting that happened last night uh, out at their new location right here in Fitchburg. Welcome everyone to the ribbon cutting of race day events. I'm Brandon, I'm with the Fitchburg Chamber. 
First of all, I want to thank everybody for coming out today, especially to race day events for this wonderful new facility here that we have in Fitchburg. I am going to hand it over now to our mayor, Aaron Richardson, to say a few words. It's been a long time since we've been able to do one of these. It's exciting. I think I remember what to do. <laughs> Welcome everyone. I'm glad you could be here. I'm very excited that Race Day Events has chosen to have their headquarters here in Fitchburg and to invest in Fitchburg. It's a great addition to the city and they do so many great events. They help out with events like the Boys and Bike for Boys and Girls Club, Iron Man, Fitchburg Festival of Speed. Uh, I know they also help with the Burby Derby and just many, many other events throughout the area. I was talking with Mike a little bit earlier and they were able to pivot during the last year and still be able to meet the needs of people really throughout the country. So that's a very exciting thing for me. Uh, so I really just very excited that we're here and able to celebrate finally. And with that, I will turn over to Mike. Mike, thank you and congratulations. Ryan. Sorry, Ryan. That's all Sorry. Right. All right. <laughs> all, right. Th all right. Thank you, Mayor. Much thank appreciated. You, and apparently, we got to fly over today. <laughs> so, um, th this building is a, a, a huge labor of love, uh, passion, and something that has really been a dream of mine, um, really since starting this business. This team behind me uh, is is truly what made this happen. It is a complete passion and love to make every one of these events that the mayor said and countless others. I look out into the crowd and see a lot of people out here that has been a support team, has helped make all this stuff happen, as well as many participants from our events. So thank you for all of that. This new building for us has been an ability to grow, it has also created additional opportunity. And as the mayor said, if, if we would not have had this new building, we would not have been able to pivot and make it through the through the tough times that we had over the last year. Uh, a huge thank you to everybody that helped make this happen. Obviously, the city of Fitchburg and the chamber, you guys have been amazing. Dan and Supreme Structures, everybody at Supreme Structures, you got, had to deal with me and my construction background making this happen, but uh, I think it turned out to be about the best building we could have. Park Bank uh, has been with us since 2006 when race day started. Everything that we do here is possible with Park Bank. And an entire race day staff has been some of the, some of the staff here has been with us almost since day one. We've had some turnover and made things happen, but the entire staff, after a tough year like this, each one of the staff deserves some well well deserved thanks for making all of this happen. So much appreciated for everybody coming out today. Um, from here, if you can go to race day events for racedayevents.com for our website or our social media, check out our upcoming events. And if everybody can stick around and have a little bit of a tour, some of the drinks, uh, the hop house beer some apps that are there, and obviously live music from Frank Martin Bush and the names. <laughs> Thank you for the mic, Frank. One.
right, there you have it. It looks like uh, it was a pretty nice place. A good crowd came out to uh, welcome in race day events uh, with their new building. And best of luck to them and their endeavors right here in Fitchburg. All right, coming up next, we're going to sit down with uh, your chief of police, Chad Brecklin, and get an update from the Fitchburg Police Department. You're watching Talking Fitchburg. You could be spreading the coronavirus without realizing you have it. So follow guidance from authorities where you live and do your part. It's important to limit in-person interaction with anyone outside of your immediate household. But phone and video chat are safe ways to connect. It's also important to limit any social gathering. This advice applies to people of any age, including teens and younger adults. Visit coronavirus.gov for the latest information. After you joined our family, it was like, I really do feel complete now. hearts are made stronger by how we treat others. Put her there. The light you share can impact those around you, but so can the darkness. Later, twerps. Did Pete saying mean things bother you? So when you reach out to another person, <laughs> take a moment to consider how they will feel and let your heart be the key to making a difference. Because of you, someone's entire day, year, or even life can change. In every heart, there's hope. It takes all of us to slow the spread of the coronavirus. So follow guidance from authorities where you live and stay home unless absolutely necessary. Use a delivery service for essential items like food and medicine. If you must make essential trips, stay six feet apart from other people. Wear a cloth face covering and wash your hands for at least 20 seconds as often as possible. Visit coronavirus.gov for the latest information. Welcome back into Talking Fitchburg. Uh, today, I have the pleasure of sitting down with our Chief of Police, Chad Brecklin. Chad, how are you doing today? I'm good, Andrew. How are you doing? I'm good. I don't uh, get to often be uh, interviewing you. I'm always a part of the interviews, but behind the scenes and just recording. So it's it's always a nice change of pace to be the one interviewing you. So Absolutely. The, the pleasure is all mine. Trust <laughs> me on that one. And, and let's be honest, who needs Jeremy anyway? Oh, right. I mean, it's always nice to have a break every once in a while with Jeremy, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> all right. Well, we got some uh, good topics to talk about today. And we're going to first start uh, with uh, Click It or Ticket, which is pretty timely. It's usually about this time of year, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, our department participates with a lot of other police departments throughout the state. No, I should say police and sheriff's departments and Wisconsin State Patrol uh, throughout the state on uh, many traffic safety campaigns throughout the year. Uh, one of those traffic safety campaigns is called Click It or Ticket and typically uh, happens annually uh, in advance and over the Memorial Day weekend which on a bit of a sidebar is hard to believe we are already uh, approaching Memorial Day weekend, of course. But obviously the uh, primary focus of the traffic safety campaign is to ensure safety on our roadways uh, in Fitchburg and throughout the state uh, with an emphasis on uh, officers uh, paying attention for speeding violations, uh, failure to wear a seatbelt and uh, OWI uh, violations as well. Those are obviously the three main contributors to, to traffic injuries and traffic deaths in our state. Yeah, it's definitely very important to, uh, to be wearing your seatbelt as, you know, it is the law. And, and will you guys, uh, as uh, Fitchburg Police Department here, be um, more aware with the construction going on too, to be kind of in, the, in those areas during this click or ticket time or... Well, that's a great question, uh, Andrew. And, and while we don't have any plans to, to prioritize uh, the traffic, I'm sorry, the uh, construction areas uh, as a result of this traffic safety campaign, our team has been spending time periodically in the uh, construction areas uh, in Fitchburg, which right now is, is largely uh, related to Fish Hatchery Road, although there is a road closure on uh, Burn Road at Highway 14. And I guess I'm also realizing that Highway 14 itself has some construction too. So mm -hmm. uh, as our time and resources allow, we are trying to spend some time in those areas just on an ongoing basis to help uh, keep the, um, the roadway construction workers uh, safe and, and well. Yeah, definitely. It's definitely a, uh, a high tension area at some points of the day. I definitely drive through there at the lunchtime yesterday and 
it's slow. So you got to be paying attention. And, and again, wearing your seatbelt at all times is just, you know, make it a habit, right? It's just to be, yeah. you, you shouldn't move your car until you've, you've done, done the reach and click, click that seatbelt and for your own safety and everyone in the car. Too. Yes, uh, obviously, you know, uh, on, in regards to construction zones, uh, patience is key. There's no doubt about it. Um, you know, no one, including the construction workers, can, can allow that traffic to move any faster than it already is moving. It's obviously an inconvenience. We get caught up in it professionally. We get caught up in it personally. And, you know, it's just a, a, an area where patience is necessary, trying to leave a little bit early uh in anticipation of potential de de delays and then finally just uh, one last thing uh, back on the click it or ticket campaign you know we do want people to um you know kind of celebrate that initial weekend of summer with memorial day weekend coming up here in uh, a little over a week uh, but again please do so safely please drive safely wear your seatbelt, obey the speed limit and by all means uh, please do not drink and drive uh, find a designated driver or just stay put where you're at or, you know, take a taxi or ride share. Yeah, there's plenty of options before ever having to do that. So, yes, very, yes. very good. Uh, moving on here, we also have had a little bit of an uptick, you said, of vehicle thefts and thefts from vehicles again in the area. So just talking about that a little bit. Yeah, yeah as, as you and I kind of talked in preparation for the show, you know, this is a topic that we've talked about quite a bit. Um, the activity in Fitchburg and communities throughout uh, the Madison metropolitan, Dane County metropolitan area, and really even, you know, surrounding counties have had some experience as well. Um, kind of ebbs, ebbs and flows, and uh, we had uh, one of those uh, higher periods of activity within the last week or so. Uh, a number of uh, cars were taken. Uh, most, in most cases, if not all cases, there were keys uh, within the vehicle or easily accessible for the vehicle. And uh, obviously valuables and those sorts of things have been taken from cars that have been left unlocked uh, as well. So I'll repeat the, the crime prevention measures we've talked about in the past. Um, these are crimes of opportunity and we certainly encourage uh, everyone to take the precautionary steps and preventative steps that they can in advance uh, do not keep valuables in your car. Please lock your car. Do not leave your keys in the car or anywhere else that is easily accessible. Keep your garage door closed. Keep the door to your garage from the outside locked. And please keep the door locked from your garage into your house. Keep your door locked from your garage into your house as well. Um, while it's not regular, there are periodic occurrences where uh, individuals will go in through open uh, garage doors or side entry doors and then into an open or unlocked um, door from the garage into the house. So please, please use those crime prevention measures. It'll keep you safe. It'll keep your valuables uh, yours and uh, will hopefully give you a little bit more peace of mind. And like you said, it's a crime of opportunity. So when all of these things are unlocked, that's makes a pretty big opportunity to get away with something. And so just don't yeah. allow it. Right? right. And if you do see any suspicious behavior in uh, your neighborhood, uh, by all means, give us a call and we will uh, have uh, officers uh, take a look at that activity and, and behavior and determine, uh, you know, what's what's happening uh, as we can. Uh, very good. And uh, uh, going along here with uh, talking some training, uh, you said you've also been doing some equity and diversity training as well within the department. Yeah, so, you know, over the last several years, we've we've been uh, spending time training uh, not only police department staff, but the city has also been training staff on uh, efforts related to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, for the police department specifically, we've had a, a couple of occasions, uh, uh, one last fall where we were able to partner with a local community-based organization uh, to provide some training uh, related to diversity and equity, um, you know, and provide us with uh, an opportunity to, you know, perhaps develop some additional strategies on how to uh, more effectively police uh, all of our communities uh, and neighborhoods within Fitchburg. Uh, that was done during our, our standardized uh, fourth quarter in-service training uh, that we have uh, each quarter. And then uh, we've partnered with Middleton Police Department uh, more recently this month and next month 
on a training that's being uh, put on by uh, some local um, local professionals uh, regarding um, it's called Badge of Equity. Uh, basically, I was able to attend yesterday. That was the first uh, joint session between the two departments, and I think we have five of them, five more of them planned between now and mid June. Uh, it's a full day session and it talks about utilizing racial equity, procedural justice uh, as we go about our, um, our business, so to speak, and interactions both internally within the police department and externally uh, within our community to look at problems and incidents and policies and decisions uh, using those two lenses uh, in an effort to achieve uh, legitimacy in our community. Well, that sounds like some great training to have here within the city as a whole and within the department. And um, that sounds great. And we'll keep up to date on how those go through through the next month. And and then uh, we'll also, I, I just want to quickly say, you know, we're running a little short on time here. I want to still get out the uh, policies and procedures are still going on and people can still um, report into that, correct? Yes, absolutely. Uh, we are continuing our ongoing work on updating our policy manual. And uh, we do have a link or a section on our website where all of the draft policies are being uh, placed for, I believe it's 21 days uh, to allow for any public comment and feedback. We have uh, received uh, feedback on those policies, which we appreciate. And I would anticipate another, um, another batch of policies being placed on that website in the next uh, week, next week or so, I would say. All right, that sounds good. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure people knew where to go look for these things and and report on them and and anything they need to do. I just want to make sure the public has that opportunity. Um, and we'll be looking forward to what the new batch is of policies uh, and procedures. Well, Chad, I uh, appreciate your time today. And um, hopefully I get to interview you again, maybe not necessarily as the police chief at that point, but we'll see. And uh, you have a good uh, Memorial Day weekend coming up and stay safe. Thanks, Andrew, you as well. All right. Thanks, Chad. Uh, that is your police chief of Fitchburg, Chad Brecklin, and we'll be right back. You're watching Talking Fitchburg. See on page four that the projections need to be blood next Thursday. Seriously? Thursday? Can't do that. Uh-uh. This is really inconvenient. I have yoga that day. I have no time for this. So I can't do Thursday, but I can do Friday. Disasters don't plan ahead. You can. Talk to your loved ones about how you're going to be ready in an emergency. Don't wait. Communicate. If you love them enough to suck the snot out of their nose at 4 a.m., then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. Welcome back in. Uh, wrapping up the show today, I want to thank uh, 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 Chief Chad Brecklin and uh, Race Day Events for letting us come out there and always a good time uh, out there and had a good band so that was nice to hear and of course Chief Chad Brecklin we only have one more interview with him as the as uh, the chief of police so we'll have to get that one in and I'll have to make that one special all right well ending the show today uh, of course you can stay connected with Fact TV all weekend long everyone have a great weekend we'll see you back here on Monday mm -hmm.